Welcome back. Welcome back to another Divine Cooking at Home. I'm Darren, a passionate food educator, and today we're going to talk about tuna poke bowl. Uh, this is a beautiful summer evening meal that I really like. Um, works really, really well. Super, super fresh, super healthy, and really easy to make as well. Um, the basic is you need some seafood, some type of fresh, raw seafood. Today I'm going to use albacore tuna. You can certainly use ahi tuna, you can use scallops, you can use salmon. Uh, whatever you do, just use nice, fresh seafood. That's the only thing you need to worry about. Um, the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make a marinade. This, this marinade is going to, we're going to put the tuna in it, but we're also going to dress the bowl with it as well. So this, this uh, marinade is, is your common kind of Asian marinade. Um, this dish originates from, it originates from Hawaii, but it has a very Japanese kind of feel to it. Obviously influenced from Japanese as well. Uh, so yeah, let's get, let's make this, uh, let's make this marinade. So the things that are going to go in this marinade, um, we're going to put a little bit of sugar, just regular white sugar. That's going to give it that sweet side of things, of course. Uh, we're going to hit it with some soy sauce. Of course, that's going to give us our umami and salty flavors. Okay, so a little bit of, and I try to go with not a really heavy soy sauce, so kind of a lighter soy sauce I find works really well. We're going to go with some chili, crushed chili paste. And uh, the crushed chili paste, of course, is, is the, the close cousin to the sriracha sauce that you, you're all familiar with. So crushed chili paste, in you go. Uh, sesame oil. We want some toasted sesame oil. So um, this, any brand will work. You just need to have a nice dark color to it so it gives you that rich toasted flavor. In that goes. Uh, then we're going to hit it with a little bit of garlic, fresh garlic. Um, one clove typically does pretty good for that. So we're just going to smush it and you can peel it and we're just going to take it and chop it up really quick. It doesn't need to be super fine by any means. Just a quick chop and in it goes. Then we're going to take some fresh ginger. We're going to run that on the rasp. That'll just break it down really well. And then you get lots of, we're going to get so many different flavors in this sauce. It works really good. I like to have this one in the fridge. It works really good. I like a, just a big bowl of steamed rice with this on it and, it, and, you're, and you're good to go. Okay, so there's our ginger ready to go. And then we're going to add a little bit of rice wine vinegar. And we'll give that a little stir and a taste and kind of see if we've done a pretty good job here. Uh, one last thing I am going to add, I'm going to add a little bit of green onion once we got our flavors kind of nailed down. What we're looking for here, of course, is a balance of the sweetness, of the salt, of the soy sauce, and of course, make sure everything's balanced that way, the acidity and the, and the spice that, we're, that we have in there. It's perfect. Nailed it. All right, so we're going to add a little bit of green onion to that. So you just mince up about three green onions will work. We're also going to save some green onion for some garnish over the poke bowl. Okay, once we've got that in there, one more stir and we can set that aside. And that's good to go. Okay, we're going to grab one more bowl here. And we're going to dice up our albacore tuna. We're looking for like kind of quarter inch cubes. This is a really nice product. This is actually um, a sustainable product that's caught off of the west coast of Canada here. Uh, so I really, I, I endorse this product a lot uh, over some of the seafood out there that's not overly sustainable. This one is a really good choice for that. Works really well. Okay, so we got it into strips first and then we will dice it from there into nice cubes. All right, and we're going to get that into our bowl and we're going to take about probably about a third to half of that marinade and we will put it over top of our tuna. So this is going, we're not cooking it. It's going to be raw, but it's going to be marinated. So it kind of helps cook it a little bit. Some of the acid. 
All right, so that looks good. That's what we got going on for our, our tuna. And then we'll take a little bit of our marinade and get it kind of seasoning it up nice. Oh, that looks really good. All right, so we can set this aside. The tuna was a little bit frozen still, which I like. It's really nice to work with when it's just a teeny bit frozen because it allows you to slice it and, cut and chop it a little bit easier. So the poke bowl is all about assembling your garnishes ahead of time. I have a pot of steamed rice that's all ready to go. Um, so once we get all of our garnishes ready to go, then it makes it really easy to put together. Lots of fun and very colorful. So let's talk about our garnishes that we're gonna use. So we have some pea shoots here. We have some fresh basil. We have some pickled ginger. Pickled ginger to me is like the key. It really brings lots to it. It's sweet and it obviously has that, that kick of, of ginger as well. Oh, one other thing that I wanna to add to our marinade for our albacore tuna is a little bit of nori or seaweed. And we're just gonna do a little julienne of this. I'm also gonna use some of that to go on top of the poke bowl as well. Adds a nice pop of color on top. So that can go right in there. Okay, so a couple other garnishes that we're gonna do. We're gonna take a little bit of purple cabbage and run it on the Asian mandolin. Um, this I really like too, because of course it has a great pop of color to it as well. And you want a nice thin, you want a nice thin shave of this, which will, which will add a crunch as well as that color. Okay, so we'll set that aside and add that to our plate. I always like to assemble all the ingredients on a plate so you can have a look at all the colors that you get to use. Okay, we'll dice up a little bit more green onion for the top as well. I like to go just on, a, on the angle a little bit. A little bit of the whites, but mostly the green. Okay, we'll set that off to the side. Then we're gonna make a little sauce. Very easy, quick sauce. This is sriracha mayo. Uh, I use this very, very commonly. It goes in quite a few things. About a half a cup of mayo, uh, one to two tablespoons of sriracha sauce. This one's a great one just to have ready to go in the fridge. It goes well on just about anything. So we'll give that a little stir. What I like about the, adding the mayonnaise, we have a couple ingredients that are gonna do this. We're adding also some, uh, a little bit of avocado. The avocado and the mayonnaise add a really nice richness to this dish, because everything else is very light. Um, and also the albacore tuna has a, a little bit of a richness as well to it. Okay, so there's the sriracha mayo. Super quick and easy to do. Uh, then we're going to add some snap peas and we're just going to do a little bit of a julienne of the snap peas. Again, when I'm, when I'm planning things to go on top of this, I'm considering all the colors and textures. We really want to have, we want to have a nice variety. So it, it's eye appealing as well as appealing when, you, when you're eating it, that you're getting a nice mixture of things. Also, I mentioned that the tuna is partially frozen. That adds a really nice contrast to the warm rice. So we have a nice ice cold tuna and we also have the warm rice, which just works super well together. All right. So I'm using some hutch items today that are really, really nice. Uh, our grater, uh, box grater. So we're gonna grate our, our carrots on the, on the hutch grater there, which works really, really well. Also using a, a hutch kitchen knife. Um, they've been so generous to uh, supply me with some beautiful kitchen equipment to use for these, for these videos. All right, so grated carrot, another pop of color onto there. Okay, so this is coming together. Oh, and then I've already had these done. See, these are radishes that I've done on the Asian mandolin as well. Now with these, I have I've had them in cold water because it adds a really nice crisp, uh, crispness to it. So we're gonna set those aside. Those are ready to go on top as well. And we'll set those aside. And then the very last thing we're going to do is, of course, oh, and we got to do on the Asian mandolin, we'll do some cucumbers as well. 
Again, there is not a definite list of ingredients that you have to stick to. I literally open the crisper and kind of see what you have, keeping in mind all those colors, um, all the colors as well as textures. All right, so we'll do up these cucumbers nice and thin as well. I like to keep things kind of uniform as far as um, nothing too big and chunky. Okay. So that looks really good. And you can see already with what we have for ingredients here, um, it's, it's very healthy. This has a really nice, fresh, healthy feel to it for sure. Okay, and then the very last thing, the last garnish is gonna be the avocado. And the avocado, like I said, it obviously is gonna add that nice pop of green. Um, but if you have a good ripe avocado there too, you should just be able to scoop it out very easily and have nice cubes to go on top as a garnish. Okay, and we'll just get a spoon so that we're kind of ready to put it on top. I wait until we got everything ready to go. All right, and so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna grab my rice and we can fill that up. All right, so nice pot of steamed rice ready to go. So you just want to fill just the center of the bowl. We're using a nice big bowl. I find the presentation is really good for this. Um, you're not going to fill the bowl by any means, but we are going to start with the rice just in the very center, just like so. And then that gives you that opportunity to kind of fill in all the ingredients all the way around it. All right, so I'll set the bowl here so we can kind of see it. So we'll give this one more stir. I'm gonna add a little bit of sesame seeds to this as well. and We can garnish the top with a little sesame seeds as well. Toasted sesame seeds. You can either buy them toasted or you can buy regular sesame seeds and just toast them yourself. I just do them on a pan on top of the stove. All right, so we'll take a little bit of the tuna first and just spoon it over top. You can do some of this ahead of time. You could certainly have the tuna done ahead of time and have it in the fridge would be perfectly fine. There's the tuna on there. We're going to take a little bit of the little bit of our radishes and sprinkle them around. Some of our beautiful purple cabbage. So you kind of just do piles a little way all the way around. A little bit of cucumber. Our grated carrot. So you can see the color coming together here, really, really nice. A little bit of that snap peas. Pickled ginger, as I'd mentioned, one of my favorite things to put on here. I'll just spread that around a bit. And then we're just gonna shift and add a little bit of basil. I find the basil's are really nice. Any herb will work fine on here, but the basil works really, really good. So you're just gonna roll it up and do a little shift and add. So very aromatic. All right, so a little bit of the basil around. And then we're gonna scoop out our avocado. I usually do about half an avocado per bowl. Very filling, every time we eat this, we always think, oh, this is, this is I'm not even gonna be full, and it's quite filling. So we'll sprinkle some of the avocado around. Okay. And then of course our spicy mayo, we're gonna just drizzle that around. And then we have our dressing that we can add to that as well. All these flavors work so well together. Again, leaving you feeling uh, pretty darn healthy and satisfied. Okay, and one last little blip of our dressing and then we'll put a, a couple last garnishes on that. I'm hungry just looking at this. It's, uh, it's definitely, definitely something that appeals. A little more sesame seeds on top. And we'll do one more couple strands of our seaweed on top. Okay, so it doesn't get much easier than that. Very quick and easy. If you can make a pot of rice, uh, all of this stuff is very, very quick and easy to make. Uh, so there we have it, folks. We have a albacore tuna poke bowl, uh, perfect for a summer evening uh, meal, super satisfying, very, very healthy. 
um, and there you go. So please try, please try making this at home. Uh, we will get the recipe to you. Another big thanks to Hutch Kitchen for supplying some of the equipment that I'm using today. Check out some of their product at www.hutchkitchen.com. Uh, thank you for joining us and watch more for videos coming your way. If you're interested in anything else uh, regarding Divine Cooking, check us out on divinecooking.ca or Divine Cooking at Home on Instagram. Uh, so tune in for more kick-ass food and kick-ass fun. Chef Daisy, where are you?